Go ahead, Go ahead Doc. Let's in order to get, to in order to get explain the explain to this wonderful young lady exactly who you are and what you're doing. Here. Explain to me, Don. Okay. Uh, Don. okay, you're you're doing this now. Yeah, we're on live. We're oh live. yeah. And you're getting shot. Uh, and you're screwing uh, up. You uh, gotta uh, go to work, right? <laughs> okay, I have. So you don't have to record every second. Ah, uh, well, just don't say too many dirty things. Okay. We'll cut you to know, the chase. She might be able to keep up. No, with you. have fun. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, you were saying about the contracts on the Hearst shifters. We just came for the show. We did. This oh is yeah, definitely. <laughs> the audience. Hi, audience. Hey. What's hey. 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 We're on live. Yeah. Yes. And right now, I'm explaining about one of the the Hearst shifters mm -hmm. that we created mm -hmm. for the Chrysler Corporation and OEM sales. Now, oh, Mr. Okay. Don, what do they call that shifter? This is <laughs> the pistol grip shifter. Very famous, yes. And this was available in the A body, B body, and C body. Now, in B the B body, body Don, you had a B descriptive bodies. way of explaining what it was to shift the pistol grip in the B body. Yes, what I was do, that? I remember you heard about that. I did. Yeah. I did hear it last week, but Mr. Kramer has not heard that yet. So We'll get into that. <laughs> what happens when we... When Chrysler wanted this style uh, shifter mm -hmm. with the pistol grip, mm -hmm. they gave us all these drawings and said, we want this mounted on the Hearst stick. Right. Well, the Hearst stick, as you can see with the logo on it, is three-eighths thick. Mm -hmm. The pistol grip sandwiched between the grips is five-sixteenths. Now, in numbers, what that means, it's the 16th of an inch difference. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted. We could not change it. In order for us to get the OEM contract, we had to make it to their spec. Right. So we had to duplicate all the pistol grip parts, mm -hmm. outside vendors, get them made, fabricate them, get them chrome plated, and then marry this portion of it to the 3 8 thick stick. Mm -hmm. So what we did is cut out this shape it had to match the pistol grip portion of it. Right. Because the hand portion of it had to match it. We had to get that die made and then weld it to the stick, grind it down oh. to match the thickness, get it chrome plated, and assemble it. Now, right below the grip handle, you'll see a chrome part here. And that's to hide the difference of the thicknesses where we had to grind it smooth. Huh, okay. Now, not a simple, not a simple process. No. Now, so everybody no. thinks, oh, well, it's, a, you know, now they make repops of these, and you know what that means. Mm -hmm. That's a copy. This is original. They're all the same thickness, but Chrysler wanted it that way. So it was a challenge for us in engineering to duplicate what they wanted in order to win the OEM contract. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very short shifter because it's for an A-body car, which is a CUDA and, and a E-body e -body car. Challenger e or CUDA. E Challenger yeah, A-body would be your short, short, uh, small, darts and such. Low yeah. to the ground. Mm -hmm. We also had to design two other size sticks that had mm -hmm. to go with the larger size cars like the Belvedere. Mm -hmm. B-body. Right. B-bodies. Right. So therefore, in, in order to do that, we had to mount the grip portion to our stick. Chrysler design of their console cars had the console obviously in the middle of the car, but mm -hmm. they wanted the stick to come out of the middle of the console, mm -hmm. meaning symmetrical. Now the driver sits here, the console's over here, the shifter's down under the floor pan here. So we had to design a stick that goes out of the shifter, over here to the console, come up the center of the console, and then they have to come back to the driver again. So then that became a real crazy shape of stick. It was like driving a trolley car. Everybody would complain that, boy, there's no leverage here, this has gone over the place. But we had to match what OEM wanted for the Chrysler products. Hmm. Driving a trolley car. So now, you know, now on, when you say OEM, and do you know about the sound package and why it's designed this way other than dropping it in for, for production? Always to keep road noise from coming up. Part of that, the sound package that we designed was sheet metal 
and, and, a, and a rubber sandwich in between. So the harmonics of the transmission wouldn't come up into the cockpit. Right, right. So the people could talk to listen to music. Now also, at one time, we then put rubber sandwiches on the shifting arms also, so the rods would not multiply the noise into the, the okay. interior of the car. Isolate. How did that help the trolley yeah. car effect? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you had the stiff enough, uh, the uh, H and all that, and then reinforced with the steel in there, just uh, like washers, uh, well, you would take we had some to do of it all out this because they did decibel meters and this mm -hmm. and, and now and the good for thing a price. is with Hearst performance since you know I worked there during the good years sixty seven to seventy six okay back back in the day when performance was a real the buzzword yes well our we started out doing shifters and through speed shops mm -hmm. so it was aftermarket mm -hmm. well you know there's harmonics of those marketing. But now with OEM contracts, it fills the void and makes a steady income for the corporation. And you're dealing with a lot. Uh, now tell me about the uh, Jeep. I was always intrigued by the Hearst Jeep Well, which project. Jeep was it? Ah, how many Jeeps did you do? We did the Commando Jeep, right. which was a more or less a decorative thing. Of, um, we built few units, mm -hmm. and that was through our Detroit facility. And it didn't go over that well. What year was that done? I think Do you remember? it was in the 70s. In the 70s? I, I have some details. I mean, the performance somewhere. area had kind of died down a little bit. Yeah. It was just a decorative And they had a V8. Or right. V8 a in lot it, of small gear gate on shifter, it. Yeah. badges, emblems on it. Right. And, you know, what it is, is a lot of people, like in our De Detroit facility, wanted, wow, let's do this, let's do that. And, Always had an idea yeah, of trying idea. to find Let's a market. That for what? Right. The right. other Jeep that I spoke about was the gold plated one, not gold plated, but gold painted one. I went to regular CJ and we used that for the Armed Forces um, endeavor. And I had the, oh. the Hearst wheels and a Hearst stick welded to the Jeep transmission. But there was just one of those, one right? One of those. And right. that was during the Armed Forces. Uh, promotions, right? 68, Correct. 69, and then the road 70, around the night. Okay. And then, uh, at Hearst performance, when we when we got through with the vehicle, we put pictures on the billboard and sold to employees. Okay. So the they would know where that went. Does anyone know where the gold went? Jack Kelly and in, in, uh, accounting bought it, and after that, I don't know what happened to it. Accounting guy bought the gold Jeep. Go figure. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> this will be interesting. And he drove it to work every day. Well, go. yeah, because it's a normal you know, vehicle. You're the accountant. Well, you want to be driving in the gold car. I yeah. can't blame him for that. <laughs> now, what was the strangest application you had? With what? With the shifters, let's say. Strangest besides the uh, Mopar? Besides the Mopar <laughs> trolley car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the strangest Mopar was always the uh, big uh, 300 that you put the shifters into. That always struck me as Which strange. One? The 300. 1970 yeah, Chrysler. We, we never put our No, no, no. It had a dual gate in it. No, it didn't. The 300H? The 300H, yeah. I thought, had a dual gate in it. No. It's a column ship. Did not. Somewhere. It was accessories. Accessorized by uh, Hearst. This this car. Yeah. Is own, that's a one of a kind. That's the Linda Vaughn car. The convertible is. Right, I understand. Yeah. I'm talking about the overall packaging the, the of the package, Hearst 300H. The 300H did not have a Hearst shifter in it. Really? No. Or Hearst wheels. Hmm. Oh, really? Are you sure? Or, yes. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just, just verifying the facts. We built 501 of them. Right. 501. One convertible. Right. Jack Duffy had this one. Okay. And... The unique part of this was paint, fiberglass hood, fiberglass trunk, trunk lid with end caps on the fenders were right. fiberglass. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the unique aspect of it. And the imperial interior. Yeah, the upgrade right. you know, mm -hmm. interior, right. 300H. I, I thought that if you got one that had the leather buckets in it, that you got the dual gate in between the two. You're saying no? No. So it what just has a regular there? shifter. Was it just a so standard Chrysler standard shifter Chrysler in Chrysler there? shifter. Interesting. I didn't know that. Now, the, maybe some of the owners put that in there. Sure, sure. So, I mean, but, but you know, 
At 50 West Street Road, that's the, the mm -hmm. plant headquarters. And then, then we had the facility out in, in Michigan, which was a couple different buildings. Most of the volume production was done out in that area, sometimes subbed out. In Detroit or in Warminster? No, out Detroit in Detroit area, area. like okay. Ferndale, yeah, right. Hammer Engineering, right, right. Um, a lot of other different facilities close by because they had to be close to like, like a Chrysler assembly plant, Pontiac SSJ, as you okay. know, was another. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Before. Yeah, right, that's right. right. The SSJ, but so did you guys? I, did you guys lease a separate facility close to those plants when you had a contract? Was that a short-term lease on a building you guys would get to do that? Sometimes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now with Pontiac, when we designed the Pontiac, which was done out in Detroit, right? Not in, at, at Warman's. Right. Detroit, right. When it was done out in Detroit. A person would go to a Pontiac dealer, put their order in, and say, I want the, the Hearst OEM package. So then their car would come in. Then it was sent to one of our conversion facilities, conversion, right. which oh, okay. is, in, in a lot of cases, in those cases were uh, accessorized uh, decals, emblems. A little Sony TV, the telephone. But was that, and that was all done by Hearst employees, people employed by right, Hearst, or right. subcontractors yes. working yeah. for Hearst? Subcontract. Okay. Of no, I'm saying were they? They were yours. They they worked for you. Yeah, at okay. that at that point. Right. For okay. that car. Now, some with the Chrysler 300H, that that could have been done in another subcontract place. Like right. That. But a lot of times we hired people out of Detroit. Facility that work for the big three huh. and moonlight. Sure, cars, absolutely. All know the know the car. Because I was always under the and again I was wrong about the shifter too. But I was always under the impression those cars had gone to Warminster for conversion. That's not no, the case. No. They were done in Detroit, which would make a huge amount of sense rather than rail car and we're trucking right. them out to out to Pennsylvania doing. So you're saying that you guys would have a subcontractor close to the assembly plant. Where you would have employees who were hired by Hearst for the work of doing the conversion yeah. work, and they would do those upgrades as close to the OEM uh, plant as possible. Right. Okay. Basically, okay. like Roush does things. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this picture shows this is our facility. That's the Warminster plant. But I personally, but you know, because Jack Watson was the fellow who was the brainchild of creating the Hearst Holmes. Right. That's where that came from. But he knew a lot of people in Detroit. Right, right. Probably sw swapped some beverages with him and all that. Well, it's funny you bring him up because I know Ted Spihar said when Ted got the de his deal with Chrysler to do all the uh, engine work for Chrysler Engineering on the Pro Stock stuff, Jack Watson went with him to Royal Oak to help him find a building that was suitable yeah. in place of the gas yeah. station. So, yeah, and Jack knew there. everybody. Yeah. Yeah, he Politically, a, a politic guy. <laughs> so us four engineers built the Hurstols at Warminster, the first one. Right, right. We built that car in 45 days. Wow. And I have it all depicted in my bio, but I'll go through it real quick so you don't fall asleep. Project. Okay. And the project sheet's here. And it says, okay, it's called Personalized Oles. Okay. A 1968 black Oldsmobile post coupe Cutlass S was delivered to our plant. Not a 442. It was Not just a, a standard Cutlass S. Okay, so it was an upscale Cutlass all, SX. All right. black, black right. gut, bucket seats. Right. Post coupe. 350 motor, 350 trans. You know, something down the road. This was a December of 67, I believe. So then our project was to make it into a Hearst Oil. So we put together a parameter sheet, who was assigned to do the project. Okay. Normally a lot of stuff was built out there, but we, we were kind of the first ones to create some of the offsprings. This is 67. So we pulled the 350 motor out. A 455 blueprinted motor was shipped in in a crate. From Oldsmobile. From Oldsmobile. You know, it was a, Without Ed Cole knowing up top that he got it. Yeah, well, yeah. as far as you know. ship stuff. <laughs> we we ship stuff. dropped it in. Oh, that. That, dropped it in. I, I put the cold air package on. 
Uh, I installed the dual gate in it. And you left, did you leave the TH350 in it or put a turbo 400 behind it? No, it's stock transmit. I didn't have time. Okay, okay. Then the, the cold air package, and then the headlights. What we did is say, well, we're going to come up with a highway headlights. You know, all this Like a GTO would have had. Right. right. So we used a GTO mechanism, moved the front bumper out of Scotch, took the parking lights between the headlights, put it down in the grill, and then took the GTO buckets because they had the hideaway. So then we took a piece of aluminum and bolted that to the down part when the headlights were pointed down, you know, to articulate. Right. And then used the, the egg crate from light diffusers. And cut that out and then bolted that to the piece of aluminum over the panel so and sprayed like the flat black. Car. And that <laughs> matched the grill. Right, right, that right. That matched the grill, so it had that plain look, that ghostly, yeah. stealth look. Nice. So then the, the other part was the wing. So I helped with the wing, and they wanted, which was Jack Watson, he was the brainchild. A wing on the back that articulated. So when you hit the brakes, the wing would go up to slow the car down. You know, if you're really going fast. So, <laughs> so what happens is we we at Hearst are a stamping shop. Right. We do sheet metal. We do steel. We do all kinds of things. We didn't fabricate aluminum stuff. Right. So Don Lane, who was at the show yeah. last week, and well, he drew it up. So we did this wing. Now the wing had to be aluminum. It had to match the the angular shape. The contour of the, of the deck lid, right? Deck which lid. was rolled. It was curved and rolled, right? It rolled down. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a straight cut. It was a sixty seven? No. Sixty eight. Oh sixty eight was round cut. Yeah. Lid. Right. But the wing was um, tapered like a wing. Pointed at the end hmm. and rounded at the front. I think it was half inch to nothing. Now, when you say at the end, you tell me the mounting end or the back end when it lifted? The, the back end. Okay. Like a wing of an airplane. Yeah. Right. As right, a wing. Right. So, who's going to make this? So, we found that uh, somebody at Mercer County Airport in New Jersey could make it in a short amount of time. So, somebody ran over to Brookhurst to them. They made it. So, then I worked on the mechanism. So, we used the electric seat motor bolted to the underside of the deck lid. Now, the electric seat motor is... You know, it goes the, 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 the seat forward and the, the back. Right. So then we put a micro switch here and a micro switch here. So when you get to this, it would stop running. Right. Then we put a micro switch under the brake pedal with a little bracket. So when you hit the brake, then it would activate. Da, 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 da. And when you take it off, da, 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 back again. Huh. I misquoted you because I just wrote this up for Muscle Car Review with a picture of you, and I said the brake. I said it lifted up under acceleration, so they keep the back end of the car planted. No. I'll have to fix that. Other way around. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call take the, it back. I'll call the editor. I'll, I'll get a hold of the editor. We'll get it. So then, up. under the dash, we had another switch to, to do a cutout switch. So when the cops were behind you, hit the brakes, the wing didn't come out. Well, look, the, the Porsches have it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, the, after fifty, it, it, right. it goes up or down or does something. Remember? Yeah, I did wrong one, but that's yeah. what it does. Chrysler had so we one. had a cutout switch. So we're all done thrashing away building this car, and we sent it up to a, one of George's Navy buddies, Al Million, had a body shop, and he sprayed the gold. So we did the gold deck lid, the gold wing, the gold along the rocker panels, and then gold trim around the hood. And that was it. That's what kind of looked neat. I designed the emblem. Well, artist concept, and then I designed it from here. Here's the original drawing. Right, right. And they were at the plater getting made because, as you know, it takes a lot to get this done. Sure. sure. I did this one, too. This is two years later. And the red and the black, you know, casting it, doing a mold and all that. So these weren't done in time. We had to ship the car out to Lansing for unveiling. So... So they didn't get on the car. When, when I designed this, if you notice, there's three prongs in the back of it, and that was to match the 442 holes in the, uh, in the fender. So when they did the car in production... They could just hit the stamp yeah. on it. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that either. That's pretty cool. That's why you're here. So. That's why I'm here. Yeah. I'm getting educated. I love it. So what happened was they decided that's another costly aspect of the mold. So they it's shown in the drawing, but they, they didn't do it that way. Hmm. 
they, they glued them on. They glued it on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they, they didn't peg stamp them through the four But they can still glue it on over the holes. Sure, absolutely. See, because yeah. as you know, if you peg stamp them with a hole, you got to put a tinderman nut behind yeah, it. You do. Someone has to get their hand up. Yeah, they do. And you can't so do that with all, do all that webbing. All you do is make the guys who restored them 50 years later mad. Yeah, well, they don't know. Stuff yeah. happens. They got so, money. So what happens, the first <laughs> one I did has <laughs> H.O. Hurst Oles and... The H and O, they were reminiscent of high output. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, That's true, yeah. See, you're learning all this. We're stuff. learning this. That's why you're here. That's just why we're here. So you're then, pretty good Is professor. there going to be a test so up here? be sleeping on by now. Then O's, they wanted O's in the middle of the O instead of the O of O's, the center of O. Not like that. That's okay. why it changed. Okay, okay. So this is actually, this is a prototype drawing here that never went oh, into Oh, they made them. Oh, they did make them. They made them just a handful. Okay. Do I have one? I wish I did. But yeah. So we had to send them out separate. So the night before that Dick Gould flat trailered this, you know, you know, open trailer to Lansing drive through the night for the unveiling at Lansing, uh, Oldsmobile, Lansing yeah. Michigan Oldsmobile Division. We said, well, let's take it for one. Now, Jack Watson visited the project. Maybe twice. He was busy building shifters other times, right? He's a shifty doctor. No, this was this is he was his doctor also Bill. Come on. He was the executive. He would come out with his private secretary, and you know go over the project details, and then we'd all go next door to Don's Den. It's a beverage place, and you know have another mini meeting. <laughs> oh, like <laughs> sure. so, hey, we're here. We're almost there. We're here. So, so what happened? We're almost at the end. So, okay, he left. We had to send this car out to Lansing. One more ride up the street road, Johnsville Naval Air Station. 100 miles an hour. Last call it, for alcohol. Yeah, well, we're just about This done. is Lynn Paxton. He's the guy in charge. You're uh -huh. missing out on a great story, Lynn. I'm all I'm, I'm not missing on any story. I ain't get the hell home. <laughs> I've been here for 12 hours. Yeah, me oh, too. Oh, picky, picky, picky. <laughs> Come on, so, Lynn. So the linkage, the this the micro want? switch, it ripped up the linkage. So I had to stay there till twelve to redesign and make that metal parts. And Lynn is complaining about staying late, and you had to stay till twelve. I'm telling you. Imagine well, again, that. We're, we're so uh, glad to be on your show. This was yes. wonderful. Thank you, Don, as always. Great fun. This Great is fun. Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com. Sure hmm? You get a copy. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. With Don Grover right. from uh, Hearst, Hearst Industries. Industries. No, Thank Hearst you very much. Yes. Hearst Performance, that's Jeff true. Jeff Stunkard, Managing Editor, Mopar Action Magazine. Very good. Whoa, 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 Jeff, what's the uh, website? MoparAction.com, and it's Mopar Action Magazine. I'm the Managing Editor. Very good. we got to put the plugs in, you know. this is Jim Kramer. Hello, Jim. Kramer, Kramer Automotive. Automotive. Kramer Automotive Specialties. Very good. Where are you located? Butler, Pennsylvania. Ah, very good. Home of the of the um, Bantam. Yes. Yes. Know it well. We four different car companies in Butler. Yep. There's Volkswagen. There was um, uh, Bantam. There was uh, Standard. Right. There was the H Hustleton, which they made like six cars, and the uh, uh, shoot. Well, let's not get back to that. Yeah, we better hustle to yes. ourselves. Yes. All right, thanks again. Old cars. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com at the 2018 York U.S. Heritage Jays. For more cool events like this, make sure you check NortheastWheelsEvents.com, SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, UKWheelsEvents.com. And while you're there, post and share your events. And we're out of here before Lynn really gets annoyed. <laughs>